See, as you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. And also, if you stay down here and you never fuck around, you'll never find out. Now, going back to Carl Anthony Towns and for the Knicks this season, there is elements of his game that we are going to need him to mirror Isaiah Hartenstein when it comes to the way he reacts out of the short roll, being able to finish on his own, showing off some of that athleticism he has going downhill, just like Hartenstein did at times when Jalen Brunson would give him the ball, when he would thread the needle when defenders would hedge, and Hartenstein would have the ability to finish at the hoop. He's going to make defenders pay if they step too close to him. He could easily blow by you, or if you give him too much room, he will step up and take that three, or he could hit the mid-range. But ironically, on the defensive side, he does not share the same lateral movement as Isaiah Hartenstein when it comes to defending. He's more of a drop back coverage big who at times when you leave him one on one with a dynamic backcourt player or just a dynamic wing, this guy kind of operates on spaghetti legs. Very similar to Carmelo Anthony. He had that powerful first step, especially in his prime years, but defending Going side to side, he always looked lost. And Carl Anthony Towns, as I alluded earlier before, he is the first player that the Knicks have gotten in the last two to three years that does not necessarily fit the characteristics of a Tibbs type player. Here's a couple examples of Carl Anthony Towns showing his mobility, just being able to get that first step on defenders and attack the lane quickly going downhill. He's not fast going side to side, but going downhill, He's pretty quick for a big man to get that first step. Very similar to a prime Carmelo Anthony. He had that quick first step, but defending guys from side to side, his legs really didn't look as sturdy. So we're seeing his ability to get that first step on defenders. And when you add on top of that Brunson's pull up three in that possible pick and roll game with Towns, along with Brunson being able to go downhill and finish, a lot of what we've seen last year with Hartenstein him just getting to his sweet spots in the paint and having a lot of games in which he scored 30 plus points not necessarily coming from three-point shots most of that came from him getting to his sweet spots in the paint but you begin to see a deadly combination of teams having to deal with a car anthony towns brunson pick and roll and teams just dealing with them too is only the beginning of that action what about mikhail bridges as we've seen historically this guy he loves moving off ball. He has really good understanding on exactly when to make cuts, and he has really good finishing ability, not only taking it to the rack, but also just all over the paint. Fadeaways, he could do floaters. He's a good finisher with dunks. He could do it all in that paint area. That seems to be his sweet spot also, very similar to Brunson. Again, we're just breaking down the pick and roll between Towns and Brunson to start things off. And we're just going down the list of combination of possibilities between those two with the pull up threes from Brunson or the pop out threes from Towns or Brunson penetrating into the lane, getting into his floater game or Towns attacking closeouts from bigger defenders. And now we're getting into the other actions with Mikhail Bridges making his cuts, being able to finish anywhere around the cup, even if he has to get to his fadeaway game around the paint. And for Carl Anthony Towns, this is where he's going to have that next step up. It's not necessarily going to come from his scoring. He doesn't have to average 30 points a game or even 25 points a game on the Knicks. But he is going to have to start getting his assist up and fill in that Hartenstein void of just being a person who can make good decisions in that short roll. When OG or Mikhail's making their cuts, could he make that initial pass? Especially if the defense is all drawn up on Brunson coming off that pick. That was a major issue in Minnesota. Not only the young Anthony Edwards, he's not quite there as far as in-game experience going deep into the playoffs with his decision-making because that pretty much was a difference in that Dallas Mavericks series in the Western Conference Finals. And you add on to the fact that Carl Anthony Towns in a way is supposed to be his vet and he's making the same mistakes in his passing game. This is a true void that the Knicks need Carl Anthony Towns to fill. Of course, he's going to get his 20 points per game, but he doesn't necessarily have to go into averaging 27, 28, 
or even 25. If he averages anywhere from 24 points to 20 points a game, but those assist numbers are up, the Knicks should be experiencing more on-court success. And a perfect example of that was Hartenstein in that role last season with much lesser perimeter talent around him. But him just being able to be that guy to make proper screens, understanding which direction Brunson wants to go into, and also making smart decisions in those picks. Sometimes he would ghost the pick and completely roll, and Brunson would hit him off with the bounce pass in between two defenders, and he would go ahead and finish for the dunk. These are the key situations in which we're really going to miss Hartenstein. Now, Towns right here, he's running the pick and roll out of this pass of Rudy Gobert, but just him operating out of that position, just horrible pass. And this is something that he's really going to have to work on. The Knicks are going to need him to cut down on the careless turnovers. Like, what is that? <laughs> the Towns be having some Russell Westbrook type plays, man. <laughs> I mean, at some point on the Knicks, he's going to be getting up to 60 million a year. So right here, Towns is operating in that Hartenstein role. Nice pass to Nas Reed, and they get the goaltend. So very early on in the season, outside of Towns' scoring, we really should be judging not only his passes out of the high post, but also his passes on the move, something that Julius Randle is really good on. Randle is really good at finding these cutters and making these passes. As we've seen it play out last year during that 15-game uh, run that we had in January, Randall was killing it. it. was getting into his bag, getting his assist up. Everything was flowing. It's very unfortunate Randall wasn't given a healthy opportunity to play with this healthy Knicks roster to see what's up. But again, contract negotiations broke down. It's all good. But Towns right here, the pass wasn't bad, but this is an area that he really needs to work on. And we'll be on the lookout for that in the beginning of the season. And also another thing about Towns, sometimes he, he settles for a more difficult shot. He has Edwards wide open right here. He's going to opt out to take the more difficult shot. Something that a lot of centers over time get, uh, get accused of. Patrick Ewing got accused of the same thing. If you look back and um, take a look at the Knicks historically. This right here is exactly what I'm referring to. Anytime Ewing is going to turn around and take this uh, baseline fadeaway J... He usually overlooks the open shooter because Ewing back in those times, he got blitz. He's one of the best defenders in the league, and he's going up against the reigning defensive player of the year along with the regular season MVP and Hakeem Olajuwon, all-time great right there. But he's going to miss, I believe this is Greg Anthony or Derek Harper. And he sometimes will get criticized for this. See, but players back then, they didn't really have the freedom to take these type of shots. You see where Greg Anthony is? If he was a player of today, he would actually step fully behind this line. But back then, players just kind of played according to the flow of the game. They just utilized the spacing. If they could step up and take an easier shot, they would. But having your star center take a shot like this, it wasn't out of the ordinary. But again, Ewing at times, he got, he got criticized for taking shots like this. And this right here is in the 94 finals. But fast forward, it's almost like going through a time machine. But I want to see Towns being able to kind of more utilize his ability to pass out of the post or cut down on the mistakes, especially if he's the person to initiate the pick and roll. It's a lot of unique combination tips can throw at teams this season. He could start a pick and roll with OG or start a pick and roll with Mikhail. Have Mikhail ghost the screen, perhaps cut to an open space on the floor. And Mikhail could either take it to the rack. His face-up game is pretty good. He could take guys off their feet with his handles. And since the Knicks have a lot of cutters on the team, Mikhail Bridges, Jalen Brunson, and to a degree, OG Ananobi, it's going to be very interesting to see how things play out as we see Edwards make a nice cut right here. And as the season progresses and the team gets better chemistry, will that improve Towns' playmaking ability or not? As right here, he's presented with two options, option A and option B. Let's just keep it at that because with the Knicks, this could be Mikhail right here. And this could be Brunson. But watch, you see, fake dribble handoff into a screen. And now Edwards is going to come around. But watch Towns right here. 
he could wait it out he doesn't necessarily have to make the pass right away he could wait it out to see what options open up because brown right here is trying to make the recovery to edwards so you see as brown's making that recovery let's say if, if he still had the ball he still has a face of game one-on-one -on -one with horford where we know if horford advances too close to towns he can go by him and with that five out spacing look at all the space in the paint you got Derek white as the low man so you got a shooting guard defending the cup right now but town's decision making will be something to look out for because if he still had the ball in his hands he could have this shooter wide open and for the knicks once again this could have been brunson and this could be mikhail so definitely not only town's ability to read the game but also stay patient in certain key situations is going to be very keen to watch going back to the details it's all about the positioning look at towns look how he positions himself just get in front of sga doesn't position himself correctly sga just takes it to the cup and draws the foul just look at the difference when curry rejects this screen and look at hartenstein he contests it it's all in the details check out hartenstein right here as he's gonna recover because Randall's gonna get blown by but he backs him up see eyes on the ball eyes also on his man it's a lot of the little things you know towns is really gonna help us out with look at curry right here as he rejects his screen and check out hartenstein hartenstein does a good job staying in front of curry while mcbride tries to recover see now hartenstein recovers back to draymond let's look at that one more time see he stays in front of him watch he's gonna point see you see how he blocks the lane cp3 can't quite thread the needle fast enough hartenstein is real alert he has his eyes on the ball and on his man like he understands the assignment that's all about details check out hartenstein it's all about the details look at his recovery look at his positioning in the recovery check gets called for the turnover again let's look at that one more time look at hartenstein he always has an eye on the ball and his man towns for some reason he's always caught in between this guy getting a floater or this guy somehow passing to someone else and getting off of alley alley dunk once again right here it's all about the details look at Hart. he's paying attention he helps contest that it's little things like this we're going to look out for towns and what he does but funny thing right here i've noticed with kp he does not really ever set a full screen he really does not like contact at all it's hard to believe at a point in his career he was viewed as a guy that can actually have a team build pieces around him he cannot hold down a team for no 82 games in a season but going back to this looking at the defense these are things we're going to judge carl anthony towns on look at hartenstein kind of plays the drop back coverage a little bit on the corner of his eye he's looking at kp and just look at his recovery at least apply a little ball pressure but when it comes to towns there's definitely lack of effort look at right here sloth man gets involved in a pick and roll and look at towns right here towns is actually in a drop back coverage good positioning kind of want to get in between these two defenders a little bit back up but he basically pulls out real early right now and it's going to leave an open lane i believe this is miles bridges to attack look at towns what the fuck is he doing and look at sloth man just yelling at him like <laughs> sloth man is sick what can you say to one of the franchise guys when he's putting out effort like that but towns in this very game scored 62 points and was benched for crucial parts of this game unreal now this season we're gonna see if tibbs has the reins to bench towns for plays like this where he's just watching like a spectator on the bench not even a contest towns gotta be on it early look at pj he's making his way to the three-point line towns is, at some point is gonna clearly see that see right here 
Towns is too late to react. He should have been reacting already. Let's look at it. Very nonchalant. Very, very nonchalant. Now, the addition of Rudy Gobert a few seasons ago may have actually provided a cushion for Towns even more for him not to necessarily worry about defense as much because low key Towns really hasn't played the center position in two seasons. So he's going into this season with high expectations for the Knicks to be the starting center when he's been alleviated of those physical duties for two years. So things are definitely going to get interesting down at MSG. Now staying on the exact game where Carl Anthony Towns dropped 62 points and got benched. And right here, I really can't quite tell if Towns actually stepped away from his drop back coverage too early, but it's real close. It's real close. Like he builds on it already. Look at the defender. As soon as he builds, he reacts. You know, with Carl Anthony Towns, what really separates him from getting up to that next level and being recognized as one of the top tier players in the league is his defense. And historically, if you look at some of the best centers to ever come into the league, they actually help their teams on both ends of the floor while maintaining that same offensive output that Carl Anthony Towns had throughout his whole career. Now, right here, this is game two of the NBA Finals. The Knicks are only up one. And Patrick Ewing continuously made major stops on an all-time great center in Hakeem Olajuwon. This is what really separates Carl Anthony Towns from just being that occasional all-star, a person that's on the fringe of making the third all-NBA team, and him just getting up to that next level. Look at Ewing right here. He practically galvanized the Knicks defense into a game two victory. I mean, look at Ewing right here battling with Hakeem down low. This is back-to-back -back plays where he calls an all-time great to turn the ball over. This is the difference between Carl Anthony Towns going up to that next level. I don't know if this season Tibbs can get his foot up his ass, man, to just to have him more detail-oriented. Because even the great players like Ewing went through a similar phase, not necessarily in the aspect of not taking pride in their defense, but trying to get up to the next level. And for Ewing, if you look back historically, I believe it started in the 92-93 season where he took more of an onus. You've seen him barking at guys, taking full responsibility of the outcomes of the games. Everything fell on him. And no offense to Towns coming from Minnesota, it's just been so lackadaisical. And even through all that nonchalant bullshit that they were on, him and Andrew Wiggins still scored a max deal with no fucking contest from the front office. So that's the culture he's coming from down there in Minnesota. And they just started having expectations, I would say, in the last two years. Again, Towns with poor positioning. Only right here, just step up to Harden. You can't give him any breathing room. Because once any defender goes under, this is prime James Harden. He's going to pull up and take that shot. Look at Cat. His eyes is never on his man and the ball at the same time. Here's Towns again. We're going to look at his positioning. He's guarding P.J. Tucker right here. Not really a high percentage three-point shooter but he doesn't help out Harden at all. He's just standing there watching. Cat, once again, his eyes is never on his man and the ball at the same fucking time. Now right here, check out Towns' positioning. He's right next to Capella. Capella is not a jump shooter. But James Harden with the blow by, look at Cat, slow to react. Where's the effort, Cat? And look at Taj Gibson. He's very frustrated. Should have got some help. Look at this right here. Man, we're going to see if Tibbs has power this season to bench Cat for any lackluster bullshit like this. Cat's right here and drop back. Look at CP3. His, his man is caught. Jimmy Butler is caught right here on the screen. So it will be up to Cat to step up or communicate to Wiggins to step up. But this doesn't make any sense right here. In a way, we're seeing why the Timberwolves went out and got Rudy Gobert. Now, in training camp, we're hearing 
that the Knicks potentially might go to a switching defense, which would make sense in a play like this. As you can see, multiple actions are happening here. Jimmy should stay with CP3. Wiggins should step up to Harden. And Cat should stick to Capella with him being the slowest guy on the floor while Jeff Teague makes his run to cover PJ. So it should be Jimmy staying with CP3, Cat staying with Capella, switch, switch, switch. But that takes a lot of communication. But this is potentially something that we could see the Knicks make adjustments with having Towns on the floor this season. Communication's got to be A1. There's already a few teams that play like this to high certain defenders. Dallas Mavericks, the Golden State Warriors, just a few teams I can name off the top of my head. Now, a vulnerability that Cat has in this drop back coverage, especially around the free throw line, seems like that's what Tibbs had him doing all series long, is he's vulnerable to these rescreens. As we're going to see Capella kind of throw these rescreens at Jimmy Butler. And look at Harding. He just has all day. Again, check out Towns during these rescreens. He's just standing there. And this series is a perfect example of why things like this kind of fell on Tibbs and Carl Anthony Towns, but especially Tibbs. No adjustments, no switches. The communication was poor. So the pivot fast forwarding to 2024 is going to be real. And it's going to be very, very interesting. The Knicks have OG and Mikhail Bridges, guys who could defend multiple positions. So things are going to get quite interesting, but... But this Minnesota Timberwolves team also had players who could defend multiple positions, Andrew Wiggins and Jimmy Butler. But maybe things internally couldn't get this team on point. The Tom Thibodeau era in the T-Wolves kind of signified for him the changing of the guard among head coaches, the way they could interact with the new generation of players. Now, I want to say are a bit more sensitive at times, but the relationship between head coach and player it's more of a partnership as to the eras prior of Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, et cetera, et cetera. The head coach was really the commander in chief, but tips fall out with Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns probably served as a learning lesson. And he's probably found new ways of motivating this era of players, not necessarily through the old tactics from before, but right here, Towns, once again, drop back coverage way too far on James Harden. He sees his man is caught. Butler's completely caught on this, but look at the amount of space Harden gets. He can he can knock down jumpers from here. And Harden just stays patient with it. Now, Towns, once again, his eyes got to be here and here. And just his positioning is off. Just makes it too easy for PJ. It just gets nastier from here. Wow, look at Towns, man. I can't believe this is fucking defense. And you look at the league now, it's like hierarchy conundrums. What is Tibbs supposed to say to the franchise star at this very moment? This is before Anthony Edwards came to the team. But when you look at Towns, look at right here. He doesn't even contest CP3. And it's things like this that hurt Carmelo's career. Him being allowed in Denver to kind of get away with certain things, even though he had his two first head coaches both call him out on it. It was definitely around the time where the league was transitioning, giving the younger players a lot of power within the franchises and the coaches were kind of dialed back a little bit. In the later part of his career, we've seen his lack of defensive awareness. It came back to haunt him. But Carl Anthony Towns almost a decade in. This is going to be very interesting to see how Tibbs gets him to buy in to what the Knicks are doing. You know, it's a good thing in a way that Carl Anthony Towns has entered into the Knicks ecosystem not having the same star power leverage that Melo had on the Knicks when he first came in. So Towns' bad habits could be called out. That's really the only difference I could see between him and Melo's situations on the Knicks. But right here, as you see, Towns in drop back coverage. Capella is just going to rescreen. <laughs> and it's easy money. Look at that. How many times he's gonna rescreen? Here's a few more examples of CP3 just having all day. 
No contest from Towns. This right here is a T Wolves facing elimination. Pick on T. Look at the coverage, the drop back coverage. Look at Towns right here. What is that? Elimination game. Playing like that in an elimination game is wild. <laughs> but it is what it is. For a lot of the offensive versatility Cat brings, defensively, the Knicks, they kind of do have enough to hide him with Mikhail Bridges and OG Ananobi. But a lot of the cultural habits he picked up in the last, I would say, nine years in Minnesota. And the fact that they brought in Rudy Gobert to have him avoid playing the center position. There's definitely going to be major retooling from Tom Thibodeau. And Cat already knows that Tri-State area is not going to accept that type of defensive effort. They're going to be on your ass, Cat. But we'll see. Throughout the season, I'll be touching base on various concepts relating to some of the characteristics the Knicks will develop going into this season with this new redefined roster. So until next time, you fellas stay safe. Peace.